The lights are off and away they yeah, go. Extremely loose. He's managed to hold on. They get he missed the, the complete bit. <laughs> He's crazy stuff. Side, Freitas is on the grass on the infield for four. He slides through. He tags Richard. They hail from around the globe, and though separated by oceans, they gather in the virtual world to battle, to compete, to race. Whether they're former champions looking to regain the title, new and eager hopefuls driving for glory, or legends in their own time preparing to dominate, they're all here for one reason alone, to win. Today we'll find out whose name will be forever etched into the record books, you're watching the Title Influence MX5 World Tour. Opening the season at historic Silverstone, the Season 8 champ Evan Maillard claimed his 10th career win, tying the Frenchman on the career win list with the defending champion Richard Eklund who after an early mistake was able to charge his way back through the field to log a third place result. Since then, all the drivers have had Georgia on their minds because in just under an hour, the checkered flag will fall at Road Atlanta for the second race of this 11 race schedule. Hello everyone and welcome to the Global Sim Racing Channel's live, as it happens, coverage of the Title Influence MX-5 World Tour. The event on tap is the 40 lap, 70 mile Jackrabbit Race 2 from Road Atlanta. I'm your host, Bill Subzon. Sharing the mic with me is the best thing from Australia since in excess, Richard Losper. Turning the knobs and pushing the sliders is the Alfred Hitchcock of iRacing, Joe Peak. And at his disposal will be the camera locations provided by Dougie Beard. Let's go ahead and take a look at the points here. We started the broadcast mentioning the, uh, uh, the successes of Maillard and Eklund, and you can see that Maillard's sitting first in the points. There's bonus points for qualifying and staying on the track. Now, Eklund had some trouble in those departments and was pushed down into ninth. Maillard's not here today, and circumstances prevented Eklund from posting a qualifying time, so the two-time champ will be starting near the back. There, there's no shorties of hot shoes up front. Most of the other top 10 drivers are back for this race, and Japan, Portugal, and Russia have all helped fill the talent bucket. But before we delve deeper into the personalities behind the wheels, let me turn to my mic mate and uh, the, our MX-5 specialist, Richard Losper, to talk about the track under the wheels. Richard, Road Atlanta. Good day, folks. Good day, Bill. Good day, Joe. Gosh, uh, these early mornings are getting to me. Nevertheless, let us talk about Road Atlanta. Now, this is the short version of Road Atlanta, not the full version. So we only have 1.76 miles or 2.83 kilometers, 10 turns. So the way that this track uh, is laid out just after the infamous S's, you uh, take a right hand loop at turn number five and turn number six and catch up to the part of the straightaway uh, going down the hill and into the chicane and then you've got uh, the normal parts of the course now this track is well known for its uh, uh, massive elevation changes uh, none of that is taken away uh, you've got uh, these front straight which is just about the only um, level part of the course after that you go uphill downhill uphill downhill around a vicious curve uphill downhill uphill downhill so um if that doesn't confuse you we will um have a lap guide and we will show you exactly what i'm talking about let's have the lap guide and you'll see what exactly this track's all about All right, let's do a lap around Road Atlanta's short course with Richard Losper behind the wheel of the GSRC MX-5. Coming down the front straightaway towards turn one, very fast right-hand flick. Really got to carry your speed through here because you'll see right after the apex, 
on into an uphill, so you gotta have your momentum going. Get the car to the right as far as you can, and then straighten it out for braking for three. Over the crest, clobber that inside curb. This is such a blind corner, very difficult to get it right. Now into the S's. These are flat out all the way through, but you gotta get the line just right, especially this last right-hander. Very thread the needle, just clip that inside curb, and then hug the inside all the way up over the hill onto the back stretch. Now you're back to the main course. Coming down to the chicane, this is going to be your best passing opportunity on the whole track here. So you got to size up the competition, but it is possible to defend through here. So you got to watch out because the guy might try to fight you hard for that position. Then on up over the crest and down the hill, it's flat to the floor all the way to the finish line from here. But that is a lap around Road Atlanta short course. Okay, I'm good. Here we go. If a driver can just do that, they should be able to uh, post a good lap time. And speaking of good lap times, or good times, it's time for the segment called Mountaintop Cabin Rentals Keys to a Good Time, a chance to let the viewers hear from some of the drivers that don't typically get interviewed because they actually are usually don't make the podiums. Now, we had a driver scheduled, and we're going to have Amjad Yaman fill in. He probably doesn't fit this category. He's seen the podiums many a time. Hopefully, we can uh, get Amjad to talk with the right now while he's on track. Amjad, you have a copy? Yes, I do. Hey, tell us what do you think the keys are for you having a good time today? Uh, it's just basically staying out of trouble. I mean, if you look at me right now, I've got traffic on both sides of me. Just making sure I stay in line and pick my, my attacking points carefully. Richard, do you have a question for Amjad? Yeah, Amjad, I'm just having a look at the weather here. It l looks uh, fairly cool. They're partly cloudy conditions. How does it feel out on track? Yeah, it's very close to, to what Iris has, the default weather. So uh, I, I feel very at home right now. All right, Amjad, uh, we'll, let, we'll let you get back to racing there. Uh, get through those those S's on the first lap. I think you'll be okay, and we'll check in with you during the race. We're well, not going to check in with you, but we'll keep an eye on you during the race. All right, thank you. All right, good luck. That was on Yaman, and hopefully he can stay away from trouble. And if you want to get away from uh, your troubles, why not visit Green Valley Lake, the best kept secret in the Southern California San Bernardino Mountains, where your best bet for lodging is Mountaintop Cabin Rentals. To get your keys to a good time, go to gblcabinrentals.com. How's that for a live read? Fit that right in there. Okay, Richard, let's go ahead now in the time we have left over and see if we can go through the grid. Okay, dokie. These guys have qualified all week long to post these times. Now, today the quick six is in effect, and you'll see those right now. Your fastest qualifier, you'll see him on the outside of row two. That's Jan Kumas. You see that big blue number one there. But these first six drivers are based on how they've done so far. So sitting on the pole is Juris Jelenko. Now, he's just because he's on the pole doesn't mean he's not doing well. He has the second fastest qualifying time. Outside of row one is Marco Mogren. Uh, sixth fastest qualifier and really competitive. Inside of row two, Travis Zabo and Jan Kumans. Uh, Kumans with a qualifying speed of over 94 miles an hour. Inside of row three, the, uh, the Japanese bullet train, uh, Tomoki Kono. And outside of row three is Sergio Moore. Yep, and in seventh place, uh, Dexter Castro. Eighth place is Dries Nice. That's your fourth row. Then in the fifth row, we've got Julian Afray and Stefan Overgaard, that's 9th and 10th position, 11th and 12th, Eric Garcia and Benjamin Lanouet. In 13th place is Amjad Yaman, unusual to see Amjad that far down, and in 14th place, Sonny Kenshin. Yeah, now, if we go to row, uh, we're going to go to row 8 now. Inside, right behind Amjad is Brian Bennett, that's a rookie, and you can see how Amjad was a little nervous there where he was starting when we were talking to him. Outside of row eight, William, Billy Bob Wright. Row nine, uh, Patrick Fliss making his fourth career start today. And then making his 108th start, the Italian Ironman, Joseph Arrow. Inside of row 10, another rookie, ben, uh, Brian Cartier. And then uh, Jeroen Ursum outside of row 10, uh, 28th in the standings right now, so hoping to do better in row, uh, in row 11 on the inside, Derek Holland, and on the outside of row 11, Al Heating making his eighth, Al Heating making his 18th career start. Richard? 
Yep, and now we're at row 12, and we've got in 23rd position Wayne Fielder, in 24th position Peter Balassa, 25th position obviously didn't qualify here Brad Wooden, uh, 26th position Mihai Messerson, 27th position a newcomer here Yassin Bebe, and I know Yassin is pretty fast, so look out for Yassin. Also, Ramon Valcasel in 28th position. Look out for him as well, pretty fast. And then way down there, 29th position. Most unusual to see that name so far down, Richard Eklund. Then 30th position, Daniel Kent. And finally, 31st position, Benjamin Nelson. Um, looks like, uh, Bill, a lot of these guys that are good drivers so far back, uh, obviously they did not put in qualifying times. They got their work cut out. Yeah, a few big names back there that, that didn't post a time this week. And that one of them is Richard Eklund. And then uh, Brad Wooden is back there. Hopefully he made the race today. But the guy I want to keep an eye on, the guy you mentioned is, I've been working on this one. Watch me roll my R's here. Ramon Valcasel. Or Val I'm going to make maybe it's Valcarcel. I'm not sure. He's from Spain. And he's pretty fast from what I hear. I've been looking at the standings in the MX-5 uh uh, the uh, the advanced series there, and he's a name to keep an eye on. He's going to be starting way back back there with Eklund in 28th position. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I got to tell you what the big news is, um, and I'm this really warms the cockles of my heart, uh, if I can say that. <laughs> uh, we have two uh, drivers here who are back in business. The first one of them is Jan Kuhlmans. Wish I could uh, get a microphone on uh, Jan Kuhlmans. And of course, the other one who's back after a three-month layoff from, a uh, complete layoff from iRacing, is Sergio Mora, Bill. Yeah, it's great. Now, what's funny about Mora and Kuhlmans, they came in. Kuhlmans has dominated this. He's a three-time champion. But since uh, Eklund and Maillard have entered the series and, and Mora has stepped up his game, uh, Kumans hasn't had a victory in quite a long time for him. He came in, stepped off the plane. He's a traveler. He's a photographer. He travels all around Europe. Stepped off the plane, posted the fastest qualifying lap. So I think the old guy has a real chance to break that streak. And then Sergio Mora. Yeah, he is a, he's the Portugal PE teacher, physical education teacher. And uh, he's starting back there, I think, in the same row with, uh, with uh, Kumans back there. Is going to be interesting to see how that plays out. A lot of fast guys. And also, we talked about uh, Tomoki Kono up early. Uh, <laughs> if he's made the grid, or I haven't seen if he's actually got up to do this yet. Let me see if I can find him. He's somebody to keep an eye on as well. Absolutely. And uh, in addition to that, we've got uh, series yep. regulars. Uh, I suppose we can call them regulars now, certainly. Tomas Zabo. I'm looking forward to watching him here today. And of course, Uros Jelenko, who will start on pole position. Amjet Yemen, the doctor, is in there as well. Stefan Overgaard. But uh, some exciting newcomers here. Certainly look out to, for uh, Julian Alfre and Yassine Bebe. I think they're both from France, if I'm not mistaken. And they are fast. So a lot of fast guys there. Sonny Kanchen's in there as well. Bill, this is going to be um, a great race. Uh, we know this track well. Look out, guys, for um, Mr. Jan Kuhlmans. He loves this track. He's had many wins on this track. I think uh, we're going to see a great race as they start gridding up. Yeah, now one of the things that uh, our associate, uh, as they're going to the grid right now, Amj uh, uh, Erden, uh, Erden Ellis Ayrton? would say that, yeah, that one of the problems with Kuhlmans is, uh, is him being patient. So we want to see that. I said, you know, maybe he's slowing down in his old age. And Ayrton was saying, no, I don't think it's old age. I don't think it's lack of talent. I just think it's, I just think it's lack of patience going on. Well, they're gritting right now. The lights are up, so they're going to be going real soon. We'll keep an eye on these guys. We're going to watch the front five, six, seven, or eight, and then we're going to have Richard walk the back of the field and see how they get through the S's. Jelenko out in front, holding position in first. Sliding into second position is Marco Mogren. There comes Zabo making a look on the inside, and I think Thomas is going to make a move inside of Mogren. They go side by side. Peeking on the inside now is that yellow and blue Accident. car. Accident. Accident at the back. 
And uh, Yassin Babert was turned around. He's got going again. I had my camera on uh, on Richard Eklund there on the start. Uh, it was quite a gaggle, as uh, as Matt Malone would say. But Yassin out of it at the moment. And we had a car spin up front. We'll see if we can figure out who it is. I heard lots of contact. Oh, it was the Japanese driver. And boy, I hear contact all over. Big crash going on in the back. Now we've collected Sergio. Sergio Mora is involved in an accident. We may even get a replay of that one as he's just pulling it on the track right now. Also involved in it, it looks like it caught Julian Afray. I hear lots of contact going on in the back. Oh my goodness. There are cars all over the place here. I've got my camera on Richard Eklund who is making progress uh, through the field at this point in time. It's tough going at the back here, I, I have to say. And uh, there are cars just everywhere as they start uh, the new, a new lap. Lap number two only now. Brian Bennett caught up there. Everybody trying to stay out of trouble. Very hard to oh. do. And <laughs> there goes Jeroen Ersum. He's looking like he's struggling as well there. Car number one, Richard Eklund. Oh, my God. He's managed to uh, stay out of trouble at this stage. Patrick Fliss involved in a problem there as well. It is crazy stuff at the moment, Bill. Yeah, we were looking at the replay there while you were talking of the the bee's nest of trouble going on, and it looks like the French driver, Afray, got into the back of, of uh, Sergio Mora and spin him. Maybe let's go to the front now. There's still contact going on. I'm looking now, maybe a little bumping going on there, but it looks like everybody's fine. Oh, my goodness. Let's go back up to the front, and we'll see if we can set this field of these guys will behave. It's so uncharacteristic of these guys. They pride themselves on getting through cleanly. Let's see who survived the mayhem. Oh, oh, I'm sorry to say that I still hear bumping in the back. I can't even do it, but let's go ahead now. Looks like everybody's clean. There's a lot of love taps going on, and Sergio Mora is still racing. Okay, up in front, Euros Jelenko leading the way, comfortably out in front of uh, Marco Morgan now in second place, the driver from Sweden. In third, Dries Nyes. Nice finish from, nice run from him, the Belgium driver. Behind him, Dexter Castro running in fourth. Nowhere to be seen are some of the drivers up front. Sonny Ketchen, where is Jan Koumans? Not here. Running in sixth, Amjad Yaman. Seventh place, Billy Bob Wright. Brad Wooden, oh, the attrition at the front was ferocious. Uh, Richard Eklund now currently running in maybe seventh or eighth position it looks like and we see Jan Koeman's running in tenth right now yeah that's oh. correct big movers have been Brad Wooden and Richard Eklund coming from way back to now take up positions eight and nine you're quite right Jan Koeman's is in tenth place he has managed to stay out of trouble if you have a look there at Amjad Yaman's car he has got a huge dent in the rear of his car so obviously involved in uh, some serious contact there he is still going though and he currently is in sixth position but our leader is Uros Jelenko doing it comfortably at the moment Marco Mogren in second place Dries Nice uh, in third place that's a really good uh, run there from Dries Nice and Dexter Castro Bill what about Dexter in fourth place there and Sonny Kenton bring making up the uh, top five so uh, these guys have managed to stay out of trouble they've obviously practiced well and it's paying off at the moment absolutely as we're on board now with the fourth place driver of Dexter Castro looking ahead of the blue car of Dries Nice now behind him is Sonny Ketchen, so he's had a great race as well. We're going to have to keep an eye and see how damaged some of those faster cars are if they're going to be able to get their speed back up and catch these guys. Looking yeah, exactly. Now, we're looking uh, up. Bill, with, uh, go ahead. Uh, sorry, sorry, Bill. Um, I'm just uh, got the camera here on Tomas Zabo. Looks like he was involved in a little bit of contact as well. He's got some damage on the right rear, but he's going there. He's in 13th place at the moment behind uh, a few of uh, dare I say guys who would normally be behind him Brian Cartier and Joseph Arrow but uh, he's making his way forwards but I have to say uh, the kudos here is all on uh, on, on Richard Eklund and Brad Wooden these guys are moving forward now if you yeah. have a car on Richard Eklund uh, Brad Wooden is just ahead of him Richard Eklund attacking as they go through the S's Brad trying to get past M uh, M is that MJ? no hang on a second that's Billy Bob Wright in the x Billy car. Bob Wright kind of holding them up there they both want to get in front of him very very quickly but uh, at this stage uh, we got a problem Eklund is off track 
Yes, Eklund has disappeared. Brian, uh, uh, sorry, Billy Bob Wright really held these two guys up. Uh, Brad Wooden kept going. I'm looking for Richard Eklund. He is, his car is uh, damaged. He's in the pits right now. And yeah, we're watching it on replay right now. You see Eklund there in that Kuma, that uh, Jaguar car. It looked like it might have been ghost contact, honestly. Looked like he gave uh, Sonny Ketchens a little bit of loop, a room, kind of a neck lag there. Poor Richard puts it in the wall. Not a good start, and he is in the pits. Yeah, he's in the pits right now. That is um, that's very unfortunate. I was, uh, they were they were moving forward from uh, way back there. Billy Bob Wright. I don't think it was Sonny Canton he got involved with. Was it Bill? I think it was. Oh, it might have been. Maybe I got the wrong Australian driver. Maybe maybe it was uh, uh, Brad Wooden. No, I think it was Ketchum who was back there with him. I could be wrong. No, it wasn't. Yeah. No, it was uh, it was Brad Wooden that was. Uh, uh, riding right next to Richard Eklund. I think these two must have had a problem. Um, uh, Amjad, uh, sorry, Sonny Canchon's way ahead of these guys. Anyway, um, Brad Wooden has kept going. Brad Wooden has picked up a number of positions now. I want to go back to the front at this stage, back to Dexter Castro. Still chasing Dries Nice there. The, that's third and fourth position. But uh, Bill. Uh, Marco uh, Mogren and uh, Uros Jelenko. Uros, our leader at the moment. He's pretty good here. And uh, he is leading and leading well. And I tell you what, we are on lap 7 already. And uh, this is looking good at the moment for both of these two guys. Uros Jelenko, Marco Mogren. And uh, just behind them, Dries Nice and Dexter Castro. Love the way that these uh, guys, uh, the way these guys are attacking this course. And they're doing a great job at the moment. Keep an eye on front. Let's go back, director, and look at Brian Cartier in 12th position. He's in a nice little battle here with Jeroen Ursum. You see him in that pink Barbie car there looking on the inside. Now, outside of Ursum is that rookie that we've been talking about. Is Oh, and he squeezed to the inside, Ramon Valkersel. He's getting passed right now as he got freight train going by him there in the in the uh, title influence car is, is uh, Benjamin Lanouette. There goes Brian Bennett. And then running back, Ramon has dropped back to 17th position. Patrick Fliss running in 16th ahead of them. Yeah, guys, now I'm driving with, uh, with uh, Jan Kuhlmans. He's got a little battle going here. And uh, in front of him, Joseph Era, would you believe? Joseph Era attacked him on the inside, going into to the chicane. Managed to get away with it. Jan Kuhlman is, is obviously uh, being a nice guy today. He's got it back as they go into the last turn, turn number 10, going down the front straight once again. But Joseph Aero has got a turn of speed or uh, our friend Jan Kuhlman is absolutely slow because here we have Joseph Aero keeping up with the great Jan Kuhlman. Well, those guys said one and two in career entries. Uh, of course, we talked about the Italian driver having over 100. Kumins is number two with over 70. Let's go ahead and look at this third place battle if we can, director. It's Dries Nice out in front, but the real action is behind him. Dexter Castro trying to fend off the Australian Sonny Ketchin there, looking towards the outside. Castro going defensive as they come up to yep. the chicane. Now, Ketchin on the inside is going to get him at the chicane and takes over fourth position. Ketchin on the move. Next up for him is Dries Nice. And guys, just behind this here, we've got a great oh. battle going on here between Amjad Yaman and uh, Brad Wooden at the moment. Amjad with a damaged car chasing Brad Wooden down there trying to get that position. And holding in with him is Billy Bob Wright having a great run, staying right with those guys. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, big action here. Amjad Yaman as they go up to number one. Up the hill now towards uh, that uh, vicious, vicious right-hander at turn number three. Look at Amjad Yaman. He is hounding Brad Wooten at the moment. Billy Bob Wright trying to stay with them. Not succeeding just at the moment. But Amjad on the move trying to uh, get that position from Brad Wooten there. Brad Wooten being chased hard and uh, uh, can't find any good response at the moment. Here comes Amjad. He's right behind Brad Wooten. Brad Wooten, is, is he going to go defensive? Yes, he does. He goes defensive almost immediately. Now he sees he's got uh, the position tied up. So he goes to the normal line. He goes through the chicane left and right. Billy Bob right, right up there with these guys, Bill. Great job from Billy. Yeah, we're watching on board with Amjit right now as he has that yellow car of Brad Wooden in his sights. 
while we're watching this, maybe I'll talk about the drivers who are out of the race. Richard Eklund, Eric Garcia, Yassine Berbe, Julian Afray, Sergio Mora, Tomiko Kono, Kono, Mora, Afray, and Eklund. Huge names. Very fast drivers out of the race. And let's go up to the front now with uh, Sonny Kenshin. He has managed to get by Dexter Castro. He is now looking at Dries Nice in front of him. Dries Nice in third place. Sonny Kenshin on the move. Dexter Castro trying to stay with these guys. Dries Nice trying to defend from both uh, Kenshin and Dexter Castro. Great driving up front here. Let's see what Dries can do. Now these are old foes. Sunny Kanchen, Dries Nice, they're always having a go with each other in the regular series, having a bit of fun with each other, nothing malicious, always uh, good fun having Dries and Sunny. Uh, if you read the uh, official racing forums, you will always get a laugh from these two. But now it's down to some serious business, Sunny Kanchen on the end, on the rear end, shall I say, of Dries Nice, going into turn, uh, uh, sorry, not turn number one, going onto the front stretch. Dries going defensive, Sunny Kanchen attacking. Sonny going to the inside now. Driss goes back to the outside. Sonny Kenshin will get the position. Dexter Castle right behind them as well. Billy, uh, uh, Bill, sorry, not Billy. Uh, Sonny Kenshin looks like he's got it. They're going to turn number three through the SS now. Driss nice. So uh, Dexter Castro, three in a group here. Great racing from all of them. They give each other enough room to get through there. Bill, do something, say something. I'm, uh, oh, my throat. I was. I was enjoying the commentary there. Very nice. It looks like it looks like Ketchin is in a battle. There's look like Nice is running in fourth now with Ketchin uh, uh Ketchin has made the pass and is pulling away. So you have the battle back there, Nyes in the blue car with Dexter Castle in that multicolored car coming at that. While that was going on, I was keeping an eye on, on uh Stefan Overgaard. It looks like he had a technical issue, looked like he lost his brakes, he's in the pits now. It might be the end of the day for him. Talking about pit strategy, there is a pit a window today. These guys are going to be pitting as we're watching the action. We think the window is anywhere between 14 guys, and go, 26 laps. Let's go back there. MJ Yemen was just off track there coming into turn uh, number 10, the last turn. Tamar Zabo managed to get through him and uh, Billy Bob right involved there as well. They uh, had to leave a lot of room for each other. Uh, Tamar Zabo on the move. Billy Bob right harassing Tamar there as they go up into uh, turn number one. Now, uh, uh, I am Jed Yaman coming back on to Billy Bob Wright, takes the position from Billy into turn number three. Billy Bob Wright uh, does touch him, uh, I think maybe did a, a small touch there, but Amjad threw safely once again behind Tamar Zabo. And of course, these guys are all chasing Brad Wooten. Some fierce racing going on all over the track here. Let's go back to Jan Koemans. Jan Koemans is in fact uh, just behind this group here, behind Billy Bob Wright. So Billy Bob Wright has got by Jan Koemans. Remember these guys were battling a lap or two ago. Uh, Bill, uh, well, let's well. go ahead. Let's go up to the front now. There's action everywhere. Let's give a tip of the hat to Marco Mogren, who's peeking in on Yuris Jelenko for the lead. Mogren has closed the distance, and he's right there now. They are close together, closer than 10 after 2. Mogren taking a peek as they come into the S's. There's no room to do it here, Marco. You're going to have to wait. As they go through, we're on board with Marco right now. Jelenko yeah. pulling away. Now, as they come around here, it's gonna, I'm going to call it the cutoff turn. As they come through here and it cuts off the long part of the track, then it's full throttle for all these guys. We'll see if Marco can get in the toe. He's lost a lot of position through the S, a lot of distance through the S's, though. Too far back to make a move when they get to the chicane. But Mogan hanging on to second place. Jelenko and Morgan. Yes, yeah, and that uh, that loop going back onto the, onto the straightaway, that uh, is much more tricky than it looks. I'm here to tell you, Bill. And it uh, looks like Uros Jelenko has, uh, has got the better of Marco just going around that loop there. But Marco hanging in for second place. Uros Jelenko, what about Uros uh, leading this race uh, uh, in a field of some 30-odd cars there? That's a great job. So, so we're looking at that battle. Let's go ahead. We can we can kind of set the field a little bit more for you. Let's drop back to third, fourth, and fifth. It's Ketchin, Nyes, and Castro. Now that's settled down a little bit. Those guys were really going at it. So let's drop a little bit back behind Castro, see what's going on there. And we go all the way back to him running all by himself, Brad Wooden. But it's not too far back. If we go back to Brad Wooden, we get Thomas Sabo, who had that trouble early in lap one, and then closing in on him, Amjad Yaman. 
back a little bit more then you have Billy Bob Wright and making the move right now you can see it on camera in that white car the Speedmaster Jan Kumans three-time champion Kumans moves up into if I can figure out ninth position for Kumans yeah uh, Kumans from 10th to 9th uh, amazing patience from Jan Kumans but uh, we are seeing him with a car that doesn't look damaged to me. Let me have a look at the, fr at the front. A little bit on the left front there. So he was involved in a little bit of love tapping. But he's got by Billy Bob right now. Billy Bob right surprising me with a massive turn of speed. And uh, uh, dicing and splicing with the great Jan Kormans. He's still right behind Jan Kormans. Not giving him any breathing space at all. But Jan uh, uh, doing the job nicely. And now into ninth position. I went back to look at look at lap one, and it looked like the yellow car. I don't want to call the wrong driver, but I think it must have been. Maybe it was Dexter Castro. Let me look again. He turned Zabo, and he got into Zabo and Kumans. I don't want to place the blame on the long driver here. It is. No, it was Tomiko Kono, Tomoki Kono, Kono, Zabo, and Kumans all got together, and that's what took those guys out. Yeah, well, and looking for Tomoki. He's out of the race at the moment, so uh, he's not on track at this stage. Guys, let us go to uh, Dexter Castro. Dexter Castro harassing Dries Nice now, and these guys are battling for uh, fourth and fifth position. And Dries Nice, uh, nice out of the chicane there, and uh, drops off Dexter just a little bit. And of course, just ahead of them, Sunny Canton in third place. So a whole bunch of, uh, shall we say, uh, uh, well, at least two newcomers to the series, Bill, in Sunny and Dries, are holding up some great positions, third and fourth place. Dexter Castro, a veteran of this series, I think he was in series number one, if you ask me, uh, in fifth place. Uh, so doing a great job, Dexter, today. Yeah, what we'll do, viewers, you want to hang around till the for the post-race show, We'll go ahead and see if we can rewind and get that crash that took out Zabo and, and Mora. And we'll show that right after the race is uh, over, before we do interviews. Meanwhile, on the track, exactly, Castro having a great run. Now, Zabo's still in the hunt and Yaman's still in the hunt. Shout out to Billy Bob Wright. Let's go back maybe and look at some of the drivers running back in maybe 11th position here so far. Patrick Fliss, we don't hear from much, currently running in 11th. Now, he's in a battle, as we see, if we're looking at a driver coming to the... There's Fliss right now in a battle with Benjamin Lanowet in the title influence sponsor car, so it's nice to see them. And I hear more contact going on. Let's see, I have a spin right now. It's Derek Holland. Derek Holland has... Looks like maybe he's blown an engine. Let's see what happened to him. Nope. He got, he got lost. Uh, Holland went loose put it onto the inside wall. It looks like he's going to be done. And we hear that Jan Kuman is the first of our leaders to come in. Yes, indeed, Bill. I was watching that. Uh, Jan Kuman came in, took an early pit stop, got himself some fuel, and he is back out there. He's come back out in what looks like 11th position. So he hasn't lost uh, too much on the track there. At the moment, he's got Al Heaton in front of him. So uh, it'll all... Uh, It'll all work out when they cross the line now. So uh, uh, yeah, that uh, 11th position, I was incorrect there. Jan Kuhlman's uh, further back than that. And yeah, we'll see how far right back. Now. 18th. Yep, and currently yep. in, a, in a battle is showing here with, with Amjad Yaman. So I'm going to assume that the doctor has come in for a pit stop as well. I tell you what, guys, there's a bunch of people with damage here. I was looking uh, at uh, uh, Patrick Fliss when you were talking. About Patrick Fliss, by the way, very useful driver. Um, we'll, uh, he's up into 11th position at this point in time, just behind him, Benjamin Lanowitz. So these guys, both of them with a little bit of damage, you can see the damage there on the left side. As Benjamin Lanowitz was attacking, going into the chicane, decided the better of it and fell back into line. So a little battle here between Fliss and uh, Lanowitz and uh, that's continuing on. Let's go back to the front here. I'm driving now with Dexter Castro once again. He is still chasing Dries Nice. Dries Nice still chasing Sunny Kanchen. We are on lap number 18 already. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, these guys uh, have to start thinking, Bill, about their pit stops right now. 
Yeah, we're looking at that battle right now of Ketchin, Nyes, and, and Castro on the screen. And yes, while we're talking about pit stops, Kuman has come in and also Amjad Yaman has come in. Now, Kuman's is running in in 17th position way far back, but but Richard and I, we've done enough uh, races with Jan Kuman's to keep an eye on him because he'll sneak up there, and all of a sudden, when the pit cycle is done, all of a sudden you see Jan Kuman's in front. I don't know if he's going to be able to do it today because he was way back when he went into that pit stop. Yeah, he was. But now if we put the cameras on Jan Kumans, he's got some clear air in front of him. He's now really attacking the course as he goes up the sweeper onto the back straight once again. And I tell you what, he's looking fast at the moment. And uh, with a bit of clear air, he's got uh, rid of Billy Bob Wright. No, Billy Bob Wright harassing him at this point in time. Up ahead of him, he's got uh, the likes of Brian Bennett and Eric Garcia. He's faster than those two guys, I'm sure. So uh, we'll see what sort of progress he makes from this point onwards, uh, Bill. Well, speaking of Jan Kumans, this is if the director is able to bring up our track history guide here, um, Kumans has several wins on this track. You can see that Kumans has, let me count down there, one, two, three. One, two, three wins in the eighth time that we've raced here. But what's interesting is Sergio Mora has two wins at this configuration. So really, Sergio, I'm sure, is disappointed to be out of the race. Eight times we've raced here. Last winner, of course, Evan Maillard from France. So there you have the history of this track. Meanwhile, Jelenko and Mogren. Mogren still hanging up right with Jelenko. It'll be interesting to see. Jelenko's a veteran of this series. He's made many and many and many a pit stops and is notorious for taking uh, left side tires, I would think. Look for uh, Jelenko maybe to do that again. We'll have to keep an eye. He likes to take just two outside tires, save a little time. And on this track, Richard, with all these right-hand turns, that may be a, a ticket to success. Oh, absolutely. Jelenko has oh, led this race. Spinner in the back here. See if I can find it. It's... Uh, Benjamin Nelson. No, that's not it. Is it Benjamin Nelson? It's Benjamin Nelson. Yes. Oh, and he brings him right back out in front. Woo! Almost collect his Tomo Sabo there as he was trying to gain control of that. I think we had that on camera. And now we're going to get the replay of it. There's Benjamin Nelson in the dark car. You can see he's already had a little bit of damage. He comes around here. Now he's going to get loose. And then it's a wild ride for Benjamin. Watching him right now. Now he's off in the grass. Now he doesn't know where to go. Now he comes across the track. But that's not so bad. Now he's got it under control. Now, Ben, careful. Don't bring it back out. But he loses control trying to get back out. Oh, and Thomas Sabo just misses him. Whew. <laughs> hey, uh, let me just have a look at uh, to bring you up to speed on uh, some of the guys who are out of this race, which is really tragic. I wanted to see these guys race. Richard Eklund, season champion uh, last year, I think. Yassin Babe out of the race. Uh, he's a newcomer, but we really wanted to see him race. Julian Alfrey, another newcomer. I wanted to see him uh, mix it with these guys. He's very fast. And of course, two of our regulars, Sergio Mura and Tomoki Kono. These guys are all out of the race, Bill, and it's, uh, it's um, a little sad to see that. Yeah, it was very disappointing. It was that early, that early incident that, that gave Eklund, Kono, and uh, Mura their trouble. And we'll have a replay of that one, hopefully, for you guys at the uh, end of the race here. It happened during the chaos, a lot of chaos in the first opening corners. We knew there would be. We heard Amjad Yaman talk about it. He wanted to get through it. And yeah, he seemed like he maybe escaped. Jelenko in the Not pits. Jelenko is coming into the pits here, Bill. This is our leader coming into the pits. So we'll see. Um, I want to have a look and see exactly where, in fact, uh, um, Jan Kumans is in relation right. to him, but he's uh, coming into his pit stall right now. Kumans just going through the cutoff section right now, so it's going to be tough for him to get there. We'll keep an eye on oh. him. And sorry, Uros had to back it into his pits. He's going to lose a lot of time. He's taking left side tires, as you said, Bill. Uh, left side's going on. He had to back it in there, so he's lost a bit of time. Meanwhile, Kumans is just going through the chicane right now. He's going to be coming around for the final corner. He's got traffic ahead of him. Kuman's looking for a way to go. Is Jelenko still in his pits? No, Jelenko's just come out. But I would uh, I would hazard a guess, Bill. He's lost at least two or three seconds just having to back it in. And now up behind him, who's that That uh, into turn number three? Ramon Valkasel. Uh, so Ramon now 
um, challenged for, uh, I'm not quite sure what position that is, and Uras Jelenko had to give it up. So Ramon was very good on this very track. I, I raced uh, Ramon on this track on the full configuration at one stage, and he was hard to beat. So let's see what Uras can do against uh, a guy who races in the regular races and is very good on this track. Here comes Uras. <clears throat> Okay. Uras goes into the chicane, takes the position. I think Ramon was just being really kind there. Gave it up pretty easily for uh, for Uras Jelenko. Now, let's see if the other guys, uh, Marco, Sunny, Dexter and Driz, have they hit the pits yet? Well, Jelenko has certainly hit the pits. And uh, Jelenko is... Uh, Mo Mogren is staying out there. And we hear that oh. Driz Nice is in the pits now. Yeah, Driss taking four tires? Unusual. Unusual. But uh, here he comes. He's come uh, back out again. And this was from something like fourth position. So uh, he's yeah. just come out. A car in front of him there, Al Heaton, beating him out of the pits. So this is going to change everything. We'll wait till things settle down. Meanwhile, okay. our, our current leader... Oh, Marco Mogren coming into the pits right now. So what we want to do is we want to see if we can find, I believe, the leader of the drives who was all pitted, I believe it's going to be Jelenko. So if we can see where Jelenko is now. Richard was talking, he had trouble. Jelenko took outside the, those left tires, but he overshot his pits. Morgan is in right now. Jelenko is just coming up to the chicane. So he's got the chicane to go. And Morgan overshot his pit. Jelenko has to go under the bridge around two and four down the main straightaway, and then he'll see if he can get around Morgan. Morgan still in the pits right now. Still waiting. Here comes Jelenko. Mogren just pulling out. Jelenko just ending up round four through corner four. Jelenko going through pit, or Morgan going through pit exit. This is going to be close. Yeah. Mogren's he's got coming him. coming at. Mogren will come out in, uh, um, well, uh, uh, provisional first place here. We still have a few drivers in front of them. Uh, Dexter Castro, I'm looking at here, and Sonny Kanchen. These guys have not made a pit stop yet. And uh, one would think they have got to be thinking about going to the pits right now. So I'm looking at Sonny Kenton. Doesn't go into the pits. Neither does Dexter Castro. Marco Mogren out there and Uros Jelenko. They surely will get the first and second positions back. The onus is on Dexter and Sonny to, to get into the pits and make a very, very good pit stops if they want to make any uh, impression on uh, on Marco and uh, Uros Jelenko, Bill? Yeah, now the maximum I think they can go is lap 26, so they're going to be in certainly this lap, if not the next one. Now Jan Kumans has made his way up to 6th position. Ahead of him is Thomas Zabo. Those guys have both made their pit stops, so Kumans in 6th, Zabo in 5th right now. Yeah, I, that is correct. Jan I have a Kumans. Car. Ramon Valcarcel has crashed and he is out of the race. Yeah, I see him in the pits at the moment. Smoke coming out we of the it, car. Have it yep. on the replay right now. Richard, keep an eye on our leader and see if those guys are going to come in while we're watching this replay here. We're on board. We're not on board, but we're watching Ramon. Everything seems fine. He's going through the S's and though he gets wide onto the grass. Now he tries to overcorrect. You can't correct while you're on the grass. Then he gets it on the runoff road and it's Turn off the light, the party's over. Sonny Kanchen came into the pits. Meanwhile, Dexter Castro elected to stay out. So Sonny in, Dexter still out there. Dexter currently showing as uh, leading the race briefly. Uh, Sonny Kanchen, one of the front runners coming into his pits. I want to check in while Sonny is in the pits uh, with Dries Nice. Dries Nice got back out there. He is currently sitting in about 7th position in front of him. Jan Kumas in front of him. So Jan Kumas has done a fantastic job. Got in the pits early, Bill, and uh, came out and battling now for 5th and 6th position there. Okay. Uros Jelenko, meanwhile, I'll get back but to you in a second. Uh, uh, starting to... He's driving by himself. Go ahead, Bill. <clears throat> okay, our leader has passed Kenshin, who is in the pits. Kenshin's coming out of the pits right now. Looks like he's going to cycle in front of Tomo Sabo. So it looks like Kenshin's going to come out in fourth position. Jelenko currently running third. Mogren in first, but the only guy who hasn't pitted yet, I believe, should be our... Would be Dexter, Dexter Castro. Castro. Okay. Dexter and he's going to go one more. Yeah, is this is lap 27. He is still out there. Currently our leader, of course, he will now have a leader lap. He's coming up to Patrick Fliss. It looks like an MJ Yaman. 
MJ uh, uh, doing a good job but having some trouble. Flees uh, oh. struggling to get through turn number three there. Nearly got caught up with Dexter Castro. Dexter did well to uh, stay out of trouble there. Now he's having a, a look at Patrick Fliss again. Got the car number one on uh, on his, uh, sorry, got the number one on his car bill. Does he think he's going to be number one at the end of the series? I don't think so. He's driving like he's in first place right now. Castro had a hard time there. It was through the technical session and Dexter knows the rules. It's really hard to make a pass there. I'm sure Fliss was getting shown the blue flag. Now, Dexter, you got to come in this time, buddy, as Castro's going through the S's right now. That's Castro, and right behind Castro there in that kind of white ochre and green car is the Benjamin Latimer car. And here comes our leader ducking into the right. Castro's going to certainly come in this time. He does. So we'll keep an eye now on Marco Mogren, who I'm almost sure is going to take over the lead. It's really a oh, question absolutely. is, where will Castro file out? Will he get out in front of Ketchin? Zabo, Kumans, who's he going to get in front of? Mogren yep. right now going through the, uh, the chicane right now. He has to go under the bridge and then around the final corner, and he'll be on the main straightaway. Meanwhile, Uros Jelenko, who led uh, all of the race until the pit stop, is trying to chase down Marco Mogren. Marco has got something like a three-second lead on our leader, uh, well, the ex-leader, Uros Jelenko. Uros must be kicking himself for making that uh, error in the pits there. But uh, he is fast. He's chasing him down. I think, Bill, he may well be catching him. Castro coming out of the pits right now, and it looks like Ketchin is going to get around the outside of him. Castro's not going to have the momentum, so Sonny moves into third position. Castro's going to take over fourth, and that's going to drop Thomas Zabo, leave him in fifth with Kumans in sixth. And you're right. Now the question is, Richard, now we get to see what uh, the serene Slovene can do. Juris Jelenko, if he's going to be able to run down uh, Marco Morgren from Sweden. <laughs> Uh, serene Slovene, unbelievable. All right, Uros Jelenko definitely catching uh, Marco Mogren. That is the big news. He's visibly made up time on him. He's going through the chicane right now, up the hill, through that right hand of the blind crest there uh, in turn number 10, coming down onto the front stretch once again. In second place, you can see his opponent in front of him, Marco Mogren. Uros Jelenko got the bit between his teeth. I want first place back, he's saying to himself. They're going to turn number one now. Marco must know that Uros is coming. Marco, uh, no slouch in this uh, MX-5, but I am here to tell you folks that uh, Uros is on a mission right now. Richard, keep an eye on the lead. Right now, we're going to take care of some business, and that's the Eagle Nest Cavern 60-second back marker review. We're going to start with the driver who's last on the lead lap, Jeroen Yersum from... Uh, where is Jeroen from? I wish I knew off the top of my head where he was from. He's Holland? from Europe. He's from Europe. Uh, currently running in 15th position in that pink Barbie car that he runs for his daughter. Now, just ahead of Jeroen in 14th spot, if I can find it, it looks like it's Brian Bennett. Brian Bennett in kind of a gray as a bumblebee on a car number 58. Killer Bees Racing, it's called. Currently running, he's a rookie currently running in 14th position. Moving ahead, another rookie, Brian Cartier in the battery tender car. Number 63, beautiful car. You see it there, running in 13th position. So a pair of rookies. We go ahead to the 12th position. Oh, he really shouldn't be in the back marker review. It's Amje Jaman, but if you look at the front of that child's play car, some serious damage on the nose of that, which has really slowed him down. Moving up one spot, Benjamin Nelson, the three-time iron, maybe four-time, I'm sorry, Benjamin Lenowet, wrong Benjamin, in a nice battle with Patrick Fliss. So maybe we can keep an eye on this one. It looks like Benjamin Lenowet's going to make a move as they come down into the chicane. He knows how to bring that car home. He's not going to do it yet. Fliss running in 10th from the Netherlands. Fliss gets a little loose on the exit of the chicane. Lenowet looking at it, and that's a battle for 10th and 11th position. And there's your Eagle Nest Tavern back marker really more of a mid-packer review today and let's go back to the front here with Marco Mogren still leading this race Uros Jelenko has uh, made up a lot of time on uh, on Marco there and uh, you can see him now they go back uh, around turn number 10 going down that uh, hill 
into uh, this is turn number 10 now on back onto the front straight again Uros Jalenko powering that car through there going towards turn number one Marco can see him coming Marco doesn't know what more he can do to stay in front of Uros but here comes Uros for that uh, first place behind them Sunny Kenton a little way back put the camera now on Jan Kumans. Jan Kumans is chasing Tomas Zaba for the fifth position Dexter Castro in fourth place. Looks like Dexter is catching Sonny Kenshin. Dexter in the final um, minutes of this race now really attacking hard going through turn three. Now they go down through the S's. Sonny Kenshin can see him coming. Sonny is in a, a, a new uh, comer to the series by doing a great job here today. Dexter, a veteran of the series, trying to chase down the newcomer Sonny Canton and doing a great job of it as well. This is third and fourth place, Bill. Yeah, and just to set the, the stage for the viewers here, we really have three sets of two cars. The front two cars are Morgan and Jelenko, with the trailing car being faster. The next two cars in a battle, Kanchin and Castro, with the trailing car, Castro looks like he's faster. And the next two cars, Zabo and Kumans, with it looks like the trailing cars, Kumans being faster. So we're going to have battles all around, running carefully, quietly, in seventh position, Dries Nice from uh, Belgium, and then Joseph Aro and Patrick Fliss and Benjamin Nelson rounding out the top ten. But let's go back and take a look at the leaders right now. It's yeah. Morgan, and that's that lead now, which was a second and a half when we were talking about it last time. Richard, that lead has been sunk down to under a second. Jalenko is going to have him. He only has eight laps to get him, but I think he's going to be able to get there. Yeah, it certainly looks that way. And in front of Marco now, there's a lap car. Let's see, that's Jeroen Ersum with damage. Let's hope Jeroen gets nicely out of the way. Just goes to show now our leaders are coming up on traffic. So Marco Mogren first place. Uros Jelenko right behind him coming through the chicane now. The battle will be on uh, very, very shortly, I believe, for that first place. Meanwhile, just checking in really quickly. Uh, Sonny Canton still holding off Dexter Castro. Jan Kuhlmann's uh, catching up to Tamar Zabo. So there's your three battles, Bill. It ain't over yet. And I, I, I fancy we're going to see some, uh, some places changing here. Well, like my dad always said about passing a Swedish driver, my dad was a great racing fan. He said, passing a Swedish driver, I've used this phrase before, it's like milking a rooster. The hard part starts after you catch it. <laughs> well, Jelenko has caught the rooster, of, if that is Mogren. Now let's see if he can milk him. He's right behind him. The lead has shrunk to just under a half second. Really, he's right there. It's whatever Jelenko finds the position. Richard, let's talk about strategy. I would think for me, I, I know a little bit about this track, I would think it would be right before the chicane if you can get to the inside. Wouldn't you think that would be his best shot? I think uh, before the chicane is the best passing opportunity for any driver here. Uh, you know, uh, sometimes when you're driving this car and you've got your spotter oh. on, as he attacks, he goes to the outside. They're coming down the hill towards turn number 10. Marco Margarin defensive already. Uros Jolenko on the inside now. Ersim out there, but he's not going to be a problem. He's slowing down. Uh, Jolenko on the inside in turn number one. Jolenko may take the position. He uh, has confounded us here. Uh, Marco Margarin still defending. Fighting back. Come, nearly coming together. Uh, Uros Jelenko for the lead into turn number three. And Marco Mogren oh. still in it. Marco through the SSD. Oh takes the position goodness. back. Fantastic driving from both of them to stay safe and still battle that hard, Bill. Oh, I thought that pass was done. Jelenko had set that up from the... Oh, and he's got a Here great run now through Here the cutoff. Comes. Jelenko Let's set see. that last pass up for the exit of the chicane. Now Jelenko's going to have the inside position as they come to the chicane. But Richard, as you know, if you have the inside at the first part of the chicane, you have the outside of the second part of the chicane. But no, Jelenko's going to finish this up before they get there. And Yuris Jelenko takes over the lead. Marco Mogren drops into second. It took him a whole lap to get that pass done. And Marco is not done yet. Marco now in second place. Uros Jelenko with a great pass into the chicane as we thought, although he did start that into turn number one. Now Marco still there with him. Marco going to the inside. Now Marco falls back into line. Marco backs off. Marco decided he won't try it into turn number one. It's a very tough to uh, get a, a pass down into turn number one, Bill. Now he's going to stay in line and possibly wait till they go down that little back straight again. Uh, into the chicane, but 
it seems to me that Jelenko has got it wrapped up here in terms of Marco. He's pulling away. Let's uh, check in with uh, third and fourth position here. Dexter Castro, Sonny Canton. That is still the same. Let's check in with Jan Kuhlmans and Tamar Zabo. That's still the same. Bill, I have to give a shout out here to two of your veterans. Joseph Aero in 8th place, Benjamin Lanowit in ninth place. Haven't these two veterans done a great job to be in the top 10 and in fact uh, not that far behind the likes of Jan Kuhlmans? Jan Lanowit has a great line where he says, I used to consider myself to be the fastest of the slowest. Now I consider myself to be the slowest of the fastest and he's done it. Now one of the things he likes to do is finish on the lead lap and with some of the tracks this season with so many short tracks it's going to be hard for him to stay up there but he's done a great job this time currently running in ninth position in our title influence sponsor car just ahead of a uh, Amjad Yaman, who's running in 10th with that damaged nose, and then Patrick Fliss running 11th. So that might be your closest battle on the race right now, as those others have settled down. Meanwhile, Jelenko, who ran down Mogren, has now ran away from Mogren, but Mogren trying to stay in there. Jelenko's opened up a lead of about over a half second. As we stay on this battle right now, though, we're looking at this battle with Lanowet, and we're looking at Amjad Yaman there, as Yaman's going to take a peek as they go over the hill to the inside i think i'm just going to close the deal and take that position yes he does yeah he did in fact uh, uh it seemed to me that benjamin gave him the position now mj yaman here comes uh by the way here comes joseph e no that's patrick fliss so yeah. he is that's patrick fliss that's for position that, that was is. Patrick uh, Fliss just took over the position from Benjamin Lanowet there. So Patrick doing a great job now falling in behind Amjad Yemen. I was going to say, Amjad Yemen, if you think he's got damage on the front, have a look at the back. This car uh, uh, has, has been shortened by probably about a meter, Bill. <laughs> well, he wants to keep it balanced. You know, some of the great <laughs> camera angles there that we had by Dougie Beard really shows the when Richard was talking about this track in the mini, you go up, you go down, you go up, you go down. Some of those low angle cameras really demonstrate. You can really see the elevation changes now as we're watching Yaman pulling away and Fliss has gotten around. So that uh, dropping into 11th part, just falling out of the top 10 is Benjamin Lanowet. But uh, not so much a top 10 important to him as to be on the lead lap. And Lanowet is uh, the last car on the lead lap, I believe. Nope, maybe we have one, yeah. Brian Guys. Bennett is still on the lead. Go ahead, Rich. Yeah, let's go to Jan Kuhlmans at this point in time. He has caught. Now, we're still looking at this battle line. We're going to stay here for a second. Our director wants to stay with us. And we see Fliss now going to the inside of, of Yaman. Those guys are fighting. Looking at that whole battle in the back is Benjamin Lanowitz staying in the fight. This is a battle for 10th, 11th, and 12th. So they go through the S's. Running 1, 2, 3. Keep an eye on your battle there, Richard. We don't want to miss a pass through the lead. But a great battle from these guys running nose to tail in a three-car train. Yep, a good battle. I was going to talk about Jan Kuhlmann's. Uh, he seemed to be catching up to Tomas Zabo. And uh, you can see that gap has, uh, has uh, decreased to uh, virtually nothing now. As Jan Kuhlmann's gets the power down through turn number three. He's catching uh, 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 Tomas Zabo visibly. Tomas responding in front of Tomas. What is got, what's happening in front of Tomas there? Jeroen Ersem, no, that's not a problem. Dexter Castro is next best. As we just saw Kai out on the grass there. Who was that? Benjamin Nelson out on the grass. Not of uh, major interest to us. Back to Tamar Zabo, back to Jan Kumans as they come down that uh, straightaway towards the chicane. Looks to me as if Jan Kumans, very few laps left to do it, but he's right on the rear of uh, uh, Tamar Zabo right now. Has he got enough to catch him and pass? I don't know. But uh, look, a quick uh, note here about Patrick Fliss. I was in a race uh, uh, hours ago with Patrick Fliss in the regular MX-5 series at the <laughs> mountain Bathurst. And Patrick Fleece took me out of that race. So I'm not so happy with you today, Patrick. Well, let's not cover him anymore then. Let's go up. Let's get away from that battle. It was a nice battle there. Let's go back up to the lead. This thing isn't over yet. As we're on lap 39, so as they come across the start finish line this time, they'll be starting the white flag lap. And maybe we'll stay up here with the leaders. Then we'll see if we can drop back and cover some of those other battles. We're on board right now with the Swedish driver, Marco Mogren. He's got just ahead of him. Juris Jelenko. Now, Jelenko has not been able to pull away. It's a five-second lead as they go around the lap car there of Billy Bob Wright getting out of the way. 
They're starting lap number, oh, lap number 39. They haven't gone here through yet. They go through the chicane. Mogren closes in. We're on board. Mogren can smell the exhaust of yours, Chilenko now. Morgan with a pretty good exit out of the chicane. He's got him. If there's any way to get a tow here, he could get it. Jelenko trying to go as they threw the last corner. Jelenko, let's see if he stays defensive. He's not. Mogren with a great run now. Mogren looking to the inside of corner one. I think Mogren's going to get it done. My doctor gave me a Valium so this wouldn't happen, but it's not helping. Valium, smell him. Those guys are going out, and here comes Jelenko back again. They're side by side as they come up to the S's. Mogren out in front, Jelenko in second. Mogren leaves Jelenko a little bit room. Mogren has the door closed, but Jelenko's not done yet as they go through the final lap now. They go through the cutoff turn that that uh, Richard said is not as easy as you think. It's coming up right now. Jelenko closes the gap a little bit. Morgan with a great exit through that corner. Now they're going down the straight that's going to lead to this left-right chicane. Jelenko right behind him. Jelenko stocking. He's got to get it done nope. pretty soon. I don't think he's nope. going to get there. If he doesn't nope. get it done before the chicane, he's going to need a great exit out of the chicane to get him before the stop finish line. Richard doesn't think he can do it. I don't think so either. The Swedish driver out in front. Oh, gets coming, the Swedish gets a little coming, loose. Coming. Here comes what? Jelenko on the outside. I don't, J Morgan goes the inside, Jaleco on the outside, he's got the momentum, is there room, Jaleco making him go the Mogren. long way around, now he goes to the outside, Mogren on the outside, here comes Jaleco, and it's Mogren. Mogren does it, now let's go back to uh, Kenton and Castro, looks like Kenton managed to finish ahead of Castro, yeah. Kuhlmans and Zabo, uh, uh, they, Zabo managed to finish in front of Kuhlmans, but what a finish, Bill. Oh, uh, never... That battle was so exciting, I wanted to keep it going for a little bit farther there. Even after they stopped the finish line, I wanted to see who got it. Whoa, a great battle. Okay, as we go through, let's see if we can wrap up the cars that are on the lead lap here. We'll finish up with uh, maybe Joseph Aro currently running in eighth position, coming around the final corner, following him. Uh, arrows in eighth. Let's see if we find the ninth driver now. Amjad Yaman's going to get ninth. Looks like that's comfortably done. A battle for tenth here. Doesn't look like Fliss is going to have anything to worry about about Benjamin Lanawood. Is it going to be Fliss and Lanawood for tenth and eleventh? Looking for the twelfth place driver. It's our rookie, Brian Cartier, going to come across in twelfth with one more driver on the lead lap, Brian Bennett. A pair of Brian's going twelfth and thirteenth. And that wraps up all the cars on your lead lap let's take a break stick with us we're going to see if we can rewind and find that lap one incident when we come back to look at that we'll be back during the break you'll see a slideshow of upcoming races we'll be back for interviews and run down the top 10 and of course the closing plugs be back in just a few
Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the slideshow. Oh. Now we're back. Welcome back again. Hope you enjoyed the slideshow and me jumping the gun there. Let's run down this uh, standings, Richard, of a very exciting race. We'll do the top ten here. Marco Mogren's going to finish in first. Second place, Euros Jelanko. On the third step of the podium is Sonny Ketchin. Dexter Castro finishing fourth, rounding out the top five, Thomas Zabo. In sixth John place. John had an event for... Oh. <laughs> okay. okay, Jan Koemans finished in sixth place after an eventful race, as you say. Seventh place was uh, uh, finished by Dries Nice. Joseph Aero, great finish from Joseph in eighth place. Ninth place, Amjad Yaman, he had his troubles, but he managed to finish in ninth place and patrick fliss great finish from patrick car number one in 10th place 11th place benjamin lanowet and then brian cartier in 12th place bill jumping in in the baker's dozen spot brian bennett a rookie nice finish for him jerome yearsome trying to get that top 10 missed it by four positions it's going to happen one of these days for his little girl benjamin kent in 15th position started way at the back Made up about half the field. Nice job from Benjamin. Al Heaton in 16th position. All these guys from Ursum, Kent, and Heaton all a lap down. Four laps down, Benjamin Nelson in a 17th. 18th position uh, in the Eagle Nest Tavern sponsored card, which we did not get a look at, Eric Garcia. Wayne Fielder in eighth, uh, eight laps down in 19th position, rounding out the top 20. Billy Bob Wright. Richard, take it home from here. And Raymond Valcasel in 21st position. Brad Wooden finished in 22nd. Derek Holland in 23rd. Stefan Overgaard, who we didn't see much of in the broadcast, finished in 24th position. Peter Balassa in 25th. Richard Eklund did not finish in 26th position. Yassin Babeb, uh, an early, uh, we fancied him early on. He finished in 27th place. Julian Alfre in 28th, 29th place Sergio Moura, and last but not least, in 30th place, Tomoki Kono. Quite an eventful race, a little disappointing, kind of like having a date with a beautiful girl and you find out she has the flu, but she goes out with you anyway. Didn't quite turn out to be quite the way we wanted with a lot of the big names going out, <laughs> but we're going to talk to some of those guys right now. now Oh, oh, we're going to go to the replay first here. This is what the lap one incident that involved uh, Kono, and I think it also involved Mora and Zabo. Now, if you're looking at it from this uh, the uh, camera shot here, keep an eye on, I think it's the yellow car of Kono. You'll see the Japanese drive. Okay, it's green. It's, it's citrus colored. 
You'll see him try to poke his nose in here. Now to the outside in that black car is Zabo, that dark colored car as we go to slow motion around the tree. Now there you see it goes three wide. Now on the very inside of this kind of bend here is Kuman. So you have the yellow car of Kono. Now it gets real tight. Kono and Zabo, do they make contact here? Yeah, they get a little bit. They make contact in that turn, and that gets Zabo a little bit loose. Now, Kumans is out on the grass with nowhere to go in that white car, looking for his place. Zabo's turned around. He's going in the wall. You see the car's breaking up behind him, and then Kumans gets together with the Japanese driver, and that puts Kono into the wall on that side of the track. Now, Zabo was able to keep going. Kono or Kumans were able to keep going, but that took care of the uh, Japanese driver. Now we're going to go to Mora. And something happens here. Keep an eye on Mora. Mora's kind of in that blue car. You see him on the outside now. Green. As, as, and then Mora is side by side with, uh, I can't tell who that is from here. Mora is black. He's ahead of Ofray. Okay, here we go. You're going to see the French driver. Look, it's about fourth car in line. You see the French driver. There you go. Mora in the black car. And Ofray gets in behind him. And Mora and Ofray both get loose. Ofray takes it off to the inside, collects another car. And Mora goes off into the uh, inside retaining wall. So that's what happened. That's all lap one where we took out a lot of those drivers early that we didn't get. So we came back and got that coverage for you. Nice job by our directors. We're going to look at it one more time here from the, from the camera of the blimp. And now we're going to go on board with an on-ground camera here. What are we looking at, director? We're looking at the Mora incident. There we go. You see the two cars. So he was a little late, but there you see Mora spinning off onto the inside and the French driver going out and collecting another driver. I'm not sure who that is out there. So that took care of. That's what happened to Afray, Mora, Zabo, Kumans, Kono, all the big names, Richard. Lap one. Yeah, yeah. It was uh, frantic in lap number one. And, uh, um, you know, there were a number of Really good drivers who then did not finish. Tamoki Kono, Sergio Mura, Richard Eklund. But we do have um, a, a bunch of these guys sitting in the yep. ready for interview room. So perhaps, uh, Bill, if you're right, we'll start the interviews. Yeah, let's go ahead with somebody. Richard, you can take him. He is a, a neighbor of yours, somebody who wasn't involved in any first last issues, as far as we know, Sonny Ketchin. So if we can bring Sonny into the booth and see what the Aussie, and we'll let these two Aussies talk together. Try not to let the accent get too heavy, guys. We don't want to uh, we'll understand what's going on. Here we go. Is he in there? there yeah, we Sonny. have. Go ahead. Sonny, congratulations on a third place, mate. That lap number one was pretty frantic, and uh, you had some good battles throughout the race there with, uh, indeed, Driss Nice and Dexter Castro. Tell us about your race. Hi, Richard. It was Sonny, you with us? Yes, can you can you hear me? Richard, yeah, can you we hear can, me? We, yes, we can hear you. Tell us about your race there. You had some uh, uh, good battles early on there with Castro and uh, also uh, with uh, uh, Driss Nice. Yes, exactly that. Um, I started 15th and uh, I wanted to focus on who's ahead of me and try to do my best to pass them. That was uh, after I messed up my qualifi <laughs> qualifying laps and uh, any which way I was just focused. Uh, at the same time, uh, I, I was able to avoid that uh, what's, hap what's happened at the start. It was quite frightening and uh, I was lucky enough to avoid it and then had the great battle with Dries and Dexter ahead. Yeah, and then uh, you brought it home in third place. There was no catching Uras Jelenko and Marco Mogren. They were very good today. But, uh, hey, third place, uh, not too shabby at all. You should be happy with that one. Yeah, I'm very happy uh, having started in 15th and uh, ending up in third. Uh, that's something uh, that's really, I, I really cherish. This is the first uh, podium I've got, and I've, I've been having a great season so far, but in the official uh, racing seasons and uh, over here, this is my, um, I'm going to look forward to doing more of this. And uh, um, Euros and Marco, they did a great job. Congratulations to them, um, as well as uh, everyone I battled with and uh, unlucky for those who crashed out in the first lap. Okay, well, Sonny, yep, we, uh, we're looking to see more of you as the season goes on. Congratulations on a, on a well-done third position, and uh, uh, thank you for talking to us. Thank you. Okay, we're going to go through, see how many quickly get up here. 
Richard Eklund did not have the kind of race he was hoping for. He made a nice run through the field, but then uh, things didn't go his way. Richard, I got notes about accidents all over the place. My, my monitor looks here like a John Nash's garage in a beautiful mind. I can't find what happened to you. Tell us what happened to you in the race. Uh, I didn't have time to qualify this week. So I started at P28 up the hill, and uh, I was P10 after lap one, so yeah. that was fun. But uh, and then on lap five, um, Billy Bob was holding me and Brad up a little bit. I went on the outside of Brad through the S's. And then we had some ghost contact, which was cool. That's right. Um, <laughs> I got sideways, hit the brakes to save it, and then Jan was right behind me, so he kind of hit me while I was still a little sideways and set me into the concrete barrier. Yeah, I remember. I think we did go back and catch that on the replay. Ghost contact is really awful. Uh, where, uh, well, it was a great run. It was, a, was your charge, was this attrition that got you up so far, or were you going through cars? No, I passed a bunch of people, yeah. and then there was also some crashes and slowdown penalties, and the first lap was really good, but at lap five, uh, the luck turned against me. Well, you know, you're a two-time champion. You've had enough good luck. It's time for a little bad luck for you. Maybe better luck next time. Thanks for stopping in with us, Rich. No problem. Richard oh. Losper now. We'll go over to you. Can we bring in Jan Kumis? You want to talk to Jan Kumis since he's come back in? It's nice to see him back with us again. Yes, certainly. And just before I talk to Jan, I just got to apologize. My voice is a little scratchy this morning. It is 4 a.m. in the morning, 5 o'clock right now. So that's my morning voice. Sorry, guys. But we have uh, Jan Kumans with us. Jan, thank you for coming back into the series. Uh, you are one of my favorite drivers, and I make no bones about that. How was your first race back? Hi, Richard. Good to be back. Well, it could have gone better, as you probably noticed. Uh, I had to avoid somebody at the first lap, which meant uh, cutting, cutting uh, the track, which then gave me a very long slowdown. So I was like, I don't know, P15 or whatever on the first lap, and then I had some more incidents of people in front. But, you know, it's how it is. Yeah. Jan, l let me butt in here for a minute, Richard. Like, Jan, they keep doing it to you. iRacing keeps doing it to you. It looks like you were just talking to me earlier. We were mentioning that this car, you seem to have a good feel for it. And now this week they're coming out with a new title model, and then uh, a little later on at the end of the year they're coming with a new version of the MX-5s. They keep uh, they keep uh, changing the playing field on you, don't they? Yeah, they're tricky little buggers, aren't they? Well, what can I do? Um, I just don't really have to drive the car anymore, which is the main issue. I didn't have a setup, so the car was really quite shitty. Excuse my language. Uh, <laughs> for, for most of my, for most of my race, and then I, after I had the incident with Richard, who was spinning in front of me, I had a bit of damage, which I chose not to repair in the pit stop. But I don't think I would have been maybe one more one, one place I could have uh, maybe gained. But that's about it. Well, I know your schedule is busy. Hey, let me ask you one quick question. I'm sorry, Richard. I took over your interview for you. What kind of photographer do you do, Jan? What what is what is your actual job? Well, I shoot a little bit of everything, Bill. Uh, celebrities, you know, hotels, whatever comes up. Really. Paparazzi. Like, uh, no, <laughs> no, I, I don't, I don't really do that. But uh, it's a bit of everything, I would say. Well, I envy you, and give our give our best to your uh, wonderful better half there, Tatiana, and let her, thank her for letting you race with us today. And we'll we'll hopefully see you again off in the season as much as you can. Okay, buddy. I'll do my best. See you guys. Okay. <laughs> Well, can I do the next one, Bill? Yeah, I, I will behave. I'm gonna. Where's my muzzle? Go ahead, bring him in. You got the whole thing, Rich. All right. Well, we're gonna bring in. Is it Dexter Castro? Yes. Let's talk to Dexter. Dexter, this is Richard. Um, and good race from you, fourth place. Uh, you had your chances uh, with uh, Sunny and Dries there. In the sort of middle of the race, you were doing a, a great job there battling with those two. Tell us about your race. Well, yeah, well, well first, to go back to the start, uh, I didn't jump it this time. And uh, I was just thinking, because <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm so over, you know, overqualified for this race once again. For some reason, I've suddenly, uh, suddenly become magical at, at qualifying or something. Uh, but I figured I'd, I'd just let anybody who was faster go by and just sit in their draft and save fuel. Let Dries by, and then uh, after that, the plan kind of fell apart because there were no more drivers to let by. Hey, well, look, you did a great job. Fourth place, uh, um, you had your opportunities, as I said, uh, to possibly get on the podium there. 
But uh, second race of the series, you must be happy. Yeah, for sure. Uh, uh, <laughs> I think this is my second best finish in the series. I think I had a second place, uh, finished second to Amjad uh, at Lime Rock a while back. But yeah, this is my first uh, top five in quite a while, I think. Yeah. Well, look, uh, great job uh, you did there and you stayed out of trouble. Uh, there was some crazy stuff going on in, in lap number one with some of the fancied names, Sergio Mura, Tomoki Kono, Richard Eklund all dropping out uh, after a few laps. And then things settled down and you uh, brought it home in fourth place. A uh, very clean race there for you. So, uh, as I say, you've got to be happy with that. Yeah, just figured that there wasn't anything I could do to catch uh, Uros. I just wasn't going to make up a six-second gap on him. I don't have the pace. And unless Marco uh, lost his draft, I wasn't going to catch him either. So so I just figured I might as well sit, treat this as the front of the race and see what I can do in the draft. Didn't quite get uh, sunny at the end, but overall a good race. Yeah, I think uh, that uh, that's exactly a good description. Fourth place uh, today. Uh, there's still a long season ahead of us. So, yeah, thanks for talking to us. Uh, good finish for you. Yep, see you guys. <laughs> All right, back to you, Bill. Is uh, do we want to talk to anyone else? I think that'll I think that'll do it for today. That was a pretty exciting race. A little bit messy, I think, for the uh, for the uh, race organizers, but not a very exciting finish at the end. So let's go ahead with these plugs. Everyone, pay attention because these are the people that bring make this all possible. We'd like to thank Tidal Influence, an ecological consulting firm. I've been told to stay on script, so I'm not going off script here. A tidalogical, a tidal, an ecological consulting firm based in Long Beach, California, that restores wetlands, saves and studies. You know, if they restore, they go in and they clean up the wetlands. They probably should have come in here today and cleaned up some of the early racing that was going on. But that's beside the point. And I'm off script after only two sentences. Saves and studies endangered species and educates children about the environment. For more information, go to Tidal influence.com and from the sea to the mountains green valley lakes eagle nest tavern is a great place for a cold drink and a hot meal check out eagle nest tavern on facebook and sorry we didn't get uh, eric garcia in the eagle nest tavern car any screen time today sorry you guys at eagle nest tavern thanks to the company's equipment and software we use on our broadcast iracing.com xplit twitch tv audio technica behringer aver media and the bubba keg 64 ounces of icy deliciousness a special thanks to Eric Eckholm, whose music not only is found here on GSRC, but in TV commercials, movie trailers, iTunes, Spotify. If you like our music, tell Eric where you heard it on Twitter, at Eric Eckholm. Additional thanks to Casey Milan, who also provides us with the music. For our broadcast, you can find more of his music at caseymilan.bandcamp.com. Thanks to my mic mate, Richard Loss, for our director, Joe Peak, Dougie Beard, for the camera locations. If you'd like to find out more about GSRC, I warn you, don't Google it, or you'll get the Golden State Rottweiler Club. You can find it. Your best bet is to go globalsimracingchannel.com. Well, that makes sense. Along with archived races and race highlights. Uh, we're also on Twitter at GSR Channel and Facebook at Global Sim Racing Channel. Next up for the Global Sim Racing Channel is the Bootleg Racing League. Now, there's no alcohol involved in that league, but it's great to watch anyway. We can have some alcohol, I guess, if you want to watch it. Uh, it's uh, 75 laps of circular short track excitement. You won't want to miss that. That's later tonight. And now that all the housekeeping is out of the way, it's time for us to have fun storming the castle. So until next time, race clean, race hard, and we all will see you on the track. <laughs>